Hi guys, welcome to another episode of New Zealand's Biggest Gap Year, where a couple of years ago, Robin and I did 365 days of 365 activities in New Zealand. And in today's episode, we are going kayaking off the coast of New Plymouth, which is in the Taranaki region. It's going to be a pretty epic um, day, so make sure to watch the whole video because also at the end of the video we're going to be going through all the comments you guys had and the questions you guys had when we released this video the first time round so join us at the end of the video for that we drive over in the camper van to canoes and kayaks Taranaki, where we are meeting Peter, who is our guide for today. We are sliding into some wetsuits, underneath some over trousers, and a over jacket, specially made for kayaking. Today we are going to kayak to Sugarloaf Island. So it sounds like a strip club name, but it's actually a bunch of rocks which are a bit over yonder in the New Plymouth port. Named because Captain James Cook, who explored New Zealand back in the day, thought the bits of rock looked like sugar lumps and he named it Sugarloaf Islands because of that. So we start paddling out of the harbour. The harbour was really cold water and really great to just get started. And we just follow Peter, giving us a bit of rundown about the Maori history right here. And basically there's a really big rivalry between the tribes in Taranaki and the tribes in Waikato, where we've been before. And this area of Taranaki was the, the centre of quite a lot of amazing battles. It's amazing to just kind of like glide onto the water, listening to Peter's story, and then the sea starts getting a little bit more rough, right? So it doesn't really show on camera, but you you know, we're going through quite a lot of swells. We have like about half a meter high swells. And we don't even notice that we're there, we're at Sugarloaf Islands, and we're like, what? We thought this was gonna be a big trip, and we're there in 30 minutes. Not bad. We see some seals on the rocks, and some seabirds too, and I love seals. I remember the first time I saw a seal in New Zealand, it was a it was the greatest day of my life and I'm still always happy to see seals every time I see them. You can even hear them coughing. I can hear a seal coughing up on the rocks and it's so, so cute. On this very small island right here that you're seeing, where at its peak, 250 Maoris living there. Now what happened is that when the tribe from the Waikato came into Taranaki and came into a big fight, they lost. And so they had to escape because at the time the Maoris were also cannibals. So when you have the choice to kind of like escape on the sea and try to make a run for it or being eaten alive, well, you know, the choice is pretty obvious. So they went onto their waka, which are the traditional Maori canoes, and they went into this island, which was the closest one they could find, and uh, made a living up there, burning a bit of wood that they could find on the island and hunting seals and seabirds from there. So it was very fascinating. We kind of ride a few waves back, so actually the, the way back onto the shore was actually much faster than the way in, since we were not going against the current, but with the current this time. And back on the shore, we take the time to thank Peter. We actually help him carrying all the canoes back to the shore. We take off all the equipment, rinse them, give them back to Peter. Um, have a little chat with him and yeah, you know, kind of all the politeness that goes along with the end of a tour. We really, really had fun with Peter and canoe and kayak. I mean, exploring Sugarloaf Island was very unexpected here in New Plymouth and, you know, I had no idea about all this Maori history surrounding those very tiny islands over there. So, we're going back to Ducks and Drakes now and tonight we are teaming up with Brett to go and do a recording for some pop-up gigs that often happen within New Plymouth and Ducks and Drakes is often enough the venue for these pop-up gigs and in order to promote it we are going down to Cruise FM to record an advert for them. Do we even need to rehearse that? I think we need it. He's giving us a quick script which we have about a minute and a half to prepare and then off we go on the microphone. The Taranaki Pop-Up Gig Network and Cruise FM presents Jersey Bob Friday July 15 at the Ducks and Drakes Boutique Motel and Backpackers. 
Jersey Bob, wonderful storyteller and raconteur, awesome melodies and great stuff. Supported by Taranaki's own Matt Herrett, tickets are limited so go on Facebook. Good job guys, <laughs> love it, well done. We also got to uh, listen with uh, Matt, which is the uh, owner of Cruise FM, to listen to a few musics and sounds of Taranaki. He showed us a few artists around. And going to the radio station is just like one part of how artsy this city is. And as we are about to find out, because we've been invited to a few more art events, wow. which we will talk to you about later. Potatoes. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. <laughs> Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. We're just gonna go through some of the comments you guys had about the video when we first released it. So, unofficial Bucket List family says, wow, you guys are radio stars in New Zealand. Yes, we were for a very short time, but that was, uh, that was a really fun experience and really unexpected. And that's always the most memorable sort of things is that is more the things that you don't plan as you're traveling around New Zealand that you tend to remember the most. Um, Anna Witter says, love the seals. Here in Cape Town, you can walk right up to them on the pier. Uh, yes, even in, in New Zealand, in places like Kaikoura, you can actually, um, you know, stumble upon seals as you're walking on the Kaikoura coastal walkway. So there's definitely things like that happening in New Zealand as well. But the Department of Conservation actually um, recommends that people stay at least, I think, 30 meters away from seals because they don't really like to be approached on land. It's not really their element, so they get a little bit scared or aggressive. Um, and we do have a question from Madhu Jurek saying, hi, Backpacker Guide or hi, NZ Pocket Guide. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for your great website, which is so helpful, funny and well done. It gives precious information about things I didn't even have. I haven't even thought about. I have a question that maybe you can answer. If you want to buy a kayak and go on my own kayaking trip with it through the New Zealand rivers, is this allowed? And if yes, where should I go? Because I guess that there are some impractical parts. Um, thank you a lot. All right, so obviously um, when we do our sort of kayaking tours on these videos, we always go with a guide because we are inexperienced kayakers. And you know, rivers are pretty dangerous elements, you know, to go onto. It's not always a good idea to go kayaking on a river if you don't know what you're doing. So first of all, Madhu, I would say that yeah, you need to be a really good experienced kayaker before you even, you know, contemplate going on to one of the New Zealand rivers by yourself. Um, second of all, yes, you need to um, do some research on the rivers before you, you know, hop in because obviously there's some parts of the rivers that are, for instance, um, they have dams. There's a lot of rivers in the North Island that have dams and that sort of thing. So you need to have a good knowledge of where you're going and where you're getting getting out again. Um, so yeah, make sure you have all that information. Um, and in terms of buying kayaks, obviously there's a, there's a lot of places that you can buy kayaks, but if you want to buy a, a new one for a reasonable price, there's um, shops like Torpedo 7, which would be um, a, a good place to buy your own kayak. In terms of places to go kayaking by yourself, um, like I say, we, we are inexperienced when it comes to kayaking by ourselves, as we've always gone with the guide. But um, a popular trip a lot of people do is the Whanganui Journey, which is in the, no uh, in the North Island, um, near a town called Taramanui. Um, that's usually where people start the journey. And it's a multi-day, usually canoeing journey, but you can do it by kayak, um, especially if you know what you're doing. Um, and along the, along the river, there are various sort of huts you can stay in and campsites. Um, so that's the one play, that's the, definitely the one thing I would look up if you are wanting to do um, a kayaking or canoeing journey independently, then look up the Whanganui journey. That would be our top recommendation. All right, I hope you found that video useful. And um, if you have any questions of your own, make sure to put them in the comments section of this video or any one of our videos, um, and we'll get to it as soon as possible. Um, otherwise, you can join us on the live Q&A session, which we do every single Sunday at 8 a.m. New Zealand time, where you guys can come onto the live chat and ask your questions. Otherwise, you'll probably find the answer to your questions on nzpocketguide.com, which is New Zealand's largest travel guide and has 
us thousands of free articles to help you plan your trip to New Zealand. All right, guys, see you for the next episode. See you later.